Good evening, everyone. Welcome to An Academy. This is Success Sampath interacting with you, ladies and gentlemen. Do you want to become IAS, IPS, IFS, IRS? We An Academy with top educators of India and meticulously designed quality content. We have been waiting for you, waiting to shape you especially. Once you enroll yourself in an academy, ladies and gentlemen, you will undergo a great learning experience. You know very well about an academy. This is India's largest and the best online education platform. What are all the benefits you are likely to get once you enroll yourself in an academy? Ladies and gentlemen, if that's going to be your question, of course, you got daily live classes. You can chat with your educator and you can engage in all drawn productive discussions and you can also ask all your genuine doubts and, and also participate in the answer polls. All these things, you know, that you can do when the session is going on. And you got structured courses here. The very structured courses, what we are talking about, completely based on UPSC syllabus, syllabus and examination pattern, so that you never get deviated from the expected framework. We ensure in such a way. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not knowing the stuff, knowing to deliver the stuff. It's not what you deliver, rather how do you deliver. You've got a mechanism to evaluate your preparation at various stages especially by conducting regular mock tests, quiz programs, and you in turn get detailed analysis based on that particular performance. You come to know where you are strong, where you are weak, and also the time you have consumed in solving a particular question. Ladies and gentlemen, once you enroll yourself in an academy, you will get unlimited access to all the live and recorded videos. You can learn from anywhere, anytime, whatever may be your electronic device whether it is, you know, a mobile phone, laptop, even desktop. So once you, you know, that you enroll, you got all this, you know, benefits for that. What you have to do, please download an academy learning app immediately. Whether it is, you know, that uh, Android or iOS, ladies and gentlemen, once you download, you are ready to access all those benefits, you know, we have enlisted now. Who is this interacting with you? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Success Sampat from Chennai. With unique experience of, you know, got exposed to the fields of, you know, engineering, management and legal education. With 24 years of experience, you know, that especially in the field of, you know, coaching, keeping, you know, that uh, uh, civil service aspirants towards, you know, the career. With my team, you know, that I could witness 250 plus results as IAS, IPS, IFS, IRS. All my kids are working in different parts of India and some of them in, in abroad as well. Ladies and gentlemen, you can ask me, sir. What's your vision? Yeah, my vision is to be part of the solution and to provide, you know, that uh, a simplified solution instead of complicating rather. That is what the purpose and, you know, uh, in that sense, of course, you know, that we would like to provide solution by enabling youth of the career solution. Fortunately, this particular vision of mine is completely in alignment with, you know, an academy's vision. We are working together. There is German so that you realize your dream, goal. You know, that whatever may be your capacity accordingly, you can become, you know, that we are there to shape you. Yes. No problem. You can take, you know, that there will be Saurabhdas, there will be brief introduction. You just watch what's happening. After, you know, attending this live session, you can watch rest of the videos already available. The platform itself, YouTube. Yes. Welcome, Saurabh. Welcome to an academy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Success Sampath interacting with you. You can also reach me through Telegram channel and even, you know, that YouTube channel part of an academy. Even, you know, that by downloading the app, you know, that you will enter into, you know, that all those free sessions, you can also watch all my videos there. Use my ID, please, you know, Success Sampath or Sampath Tirubengidam. You know, it is that way. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's not only me, as I told you, right, as a team, we are working, you know, more than 100 plus top educators of India waiting to shape you waiting to, you know, to provide career solutions so that you become officer, leader of your, in, in your own capacity. Ladies and gentlemen, under UPSC Civil Service Examination, we have got more than 15,000 courses, you know, say, subject-specific module, duration-specific module. It is that way. Ladies and gentlemen, not only that, you know, under UPSC Civil Service Examination, we have devised 
two major programs. One is, you know, PLUS program. Another one is, you know, that iconic program. We are talking about what is this PLUS program? You know that here, see, you've got a lot of advantages. Say you got live classes like this every day. You got test series, unlimited practice sessions. You got structured schedule mechanisms. You can be either part of, you know, 12 months program or 24 months program. And you can also use my referral code, say, success to avoid maximum 10% discount. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that way. And uh, you know that more than this plus program, we strongly recommend iconic program. You know, you can ask me, what is this iconic program? Yes, more than this plus program, the advantage, of course, you will be allotted a personal coach, a personal mentor to, to understand your nature and to suggest, you know, that the very study planner accordingly and you will be getting very personalized feedback and you will be trained every day in terms of answer writing practices. There is a gentleman, you know, that that's the unique feature on the part of this iconic program, which has got more advantages than the very plus program what you have seen. You know, here too, you have, you know, 12 months program, 24 months program. Please, you know, that use my referral code, say success to avail, you know, maximum 10% discount. Ladies and gentlemen, if you speak technically in terms of payment, you know, that you end up paying mere 80 to 100 rupees, you know, that if you calculate in terms of per day basis. Not even the consumption towards your evening, you know, expenditures given COVID situation and also, you know, that uh, the very unacademy is likely to increase its, you know, that the fee heights, you know, that of course on the cars. So, we urge you to, you know, that join immediately, choose the program, especially iconic program. There is a gentleman to avail all the benefits. You might be aware this is going to be 25 to 30 years of wonderful career. So, we expect you to devote at least two years. There is no passions. No leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Anna Academy once again. You know, this is Success Sampathy interacting with you. Yes. What is the very purpose of our interaction today? You know, that every time you have to check yourself, what is your purpose? What is the very direction you are heading towards? You know, given various distractions in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you know, there, there, there is always someone, you know, that to stop you, to slow you down, given that particular factor. Please understand the purpose, the purpose of interaction today. Of course. Taking you to, you know, that the thinker's world, it is in continuation. Of course, you know, that uh, uh, we have seen, you know, that the, uh, a lot of global thinkers already, you know, especially the paper one of, you know, that uh, the very sociology, UPSC, civil service examination, mains optional subject, which is very popular, highly scoring, you know, well, you are in touch with that. It has got other advantages that you score good marks in parallel in your general studies portion also. Paper one, society, social issue. And paper four of general studies, say ethics, case studies. Not only that, you know, out of eight domains, men for uh, generating topics for various say, based on uh, uh, the, the, the 25 years of, you know, the previous questions I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. One of the domain, one of the domain. Oh, that's fantastic, Saurav. I appreciate you. Welcome to, you know, that an academy. And you have enrolled yourself part of iconic program. You know, that's fantastic. You are going to benefit, you know, that in an immense way. And you know that you can be in touch with us also. Is that way? Ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, that particular thing, the very essay, without preparation, having opted sociology, having prepared for sociology, you got multiple advantages. Scoring in GS as well as scoring in essay paper. Not only that. The byproduct of sociology, of course, you get objectivity, value neutrality. You never take sides. You never get influenced, you know, whatever may be the distraction, right, whatever may be the bias, of course, right. Ladies and gentlemen, that, that, you know, that, that the neutrality, of course, value neutrality, you practice. It's otherwise called here objectivity or even cultural relativism. Otherwise, you are capable of seeing two sides of a single coin so that you understand the spirit. What is right? What is the fact? What is the truth? Getting reflected, I believe. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Welcome. You know the to do. Yeah. Very good evening. Welcome to an academy, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. It is that way. See, actually, you know, this particular popular, you know, and highly scoring optional subject. You know, for that purpose, we already discussed. You know, introduced you. You know, that a chunk of you know a, a basic concept that took you to the next level of understanding. Also, we introduced you. You know, that the very perspectives of sociology. Say. Structural functionalism, conflict school of thought, they are called major perspectives in sociology. And also we discussed the microscopic perspective, that is going to be the future of sociology, you know well, that is called symbolic interactionism. 
and we also discussed in the name of you know the, the very thinkers right thinker series if you are good at thinkers you know that unit of paper one syllabus you are capable of scoring up to 200 out of 250 you will come to know you just analyze previous questions because not only that unit all these thinkers will re-enter once again the rest of the units also in the name of various social institutions available marriage family kinship education institution economic institution political institution even social change social stratification they re-enter <laughs> so that you know this is what the stuff you know that it is it is given you know that in terms of units uh, uh, you know uh, based on social institution and exclusively for thinkers also if you are good at their paper one itself you will be scoring you know 200 plus out of 250 right so uh, we we took you to you know that various social thinkers they are called founding fathers of sociology of course we discussed you know uh, in the previous videos you know please you watch uh, uh, you take time you know that uh, after once you listen to that after that you know you have to just you know that uh, start writing practice i think you know to that extent we have supplied materials also please watch and tell your feedback also we are ready to with open mindedness we are ready to uh, customize personalize also to the next level yes the thinkers of course the karl marx max weber imal durkheim or darkheim and talcott parsons even rk metten and and the symbolic interactionism perspective we discussed we took you to you know the george herbert mead also that's paper one and the various theories concepts perspectives when you apply in indian context is that's your paper too that is what called indian society there is a general the subject is very simple stuff is same when you do it at the global level uh, theories perspectives paper one you know that apply it in indian context paper two that's all but, but you have to bring local flavor no for that we have to invite you know indian sociologists in that line we took you to you know that indological perspective of gs gurgi and gs gurgi govind sadasiv you know that gurgi Said to be the founding father of Indian sociology, ladies and gentlemen. But that's what that 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 was called as you know Sanskrit textbook based view, bookish view. And also he was accused, you know, that uh, upholding, you know, that supporting, you know, that upper caste, uh, 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 the Brahmins' dominant values. Even Yemen's universal structural functionalism also was criticized on that ground. You know that, right? It is that way. But 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 that said to be the foundation. But but he has got his own characteristic difference from. Uh, the colonial writers you know who wrote everything about india for exploitation purpose but whereas he took to the next level and but the very gs gurie's contribution was criticized as as if you know that more of ideological than social you know well all those steps we discussed and uh, then we took you to the you know the world of structural functionalism by mysore narasimhachar spinwar now well well renowned indian sociologist happened to be student of that uh, uh, gs gurie you know well we discussed and, and and he you know that tried to you know that relate because you know he got inspiration from social anthropological world especially Ratcliffe, Brown, Malinovsky might be aware even to some extent with Ivan Spritzer you know well so his bone of contention happened to be you know that uh, trying to understand Indian society especially in terms of village studies even the caste to some extent and apart from that Yemen's was you know very well you know that uh, 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 famous for the household phraseologies like you know that uh, dominant caste and wood bank politics westernization sanskritization we spoke everything when he was trying to understand indian society the social change in indian society he spoke in favor of uh, the very cultural changes under the banner of sanskritization westernization you know that not only that even the very structural functionalism under which how all the elements of uh, the society coordinated in such a way reaching an agreement in such a way so as to ensure survival so as to bring social order stability social equilibrium so all the parts of the society you know that working in such a way so as to ensure social stability social order that's what because you know structural functionalism treats society as a system as if it has got order i i, I take few minutes to recall because there are some newcomers also ladies and gentlemen Yeah, you can watch it will be always available in youtube channel to do very good afternoon good evening of course and it's not only this video you got a lot of videos already available please you know that search under success sampath or sampath Ruvengidam. you put you know uh, uh, sociology also apparently you will get uh, you know that begins with grand strategy to score more than 450 plus out of 500 you will you will understand yes 
I think, you know, if you please watch, then you type your feedback. I'll, I'll be very happy to answer. To do. Let's determine it that way. So, you know, that after that, today we are going to discuss, especially about, you know, AR Desai, a Marxian perspective in Indian society. You know how Marxism, of course, conflict school of thought. The very conflict school of thought, you are well aware, you know, that the history of hitherto all existing society is full of struggle. The struggle between haves and have nots, this is what the view is. Because they are completely preoccupied the, with the notion called change, the change, especially radical change by revolution. Why revolution? Why that social movement is culminating in revolutionary social movement? It's because of the simmering discontent, inherent contradiction based on exploitation. And how trying to exploit the have nots? Of course, it's not hobnobbing, friendly relationship between the two classes. Naturally, you know, that antagonism, conflict. The history of hitherto all existing societies is full of struggle, struggle between haves and have-nots. This particular principle is applied in Indian context. That's what, you know, uh, 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 the Marxist uh, uh, view, perspective got applied in Indian context, especially by A.R. Desai. And, and prior to A.R. Desai, you know that you know well, the D.P. Mukherjee applied this particular concept. But of course, you know, the very A.R. Desai, you know, that apart from uh, 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 his, his learning from his own, you know, that very erudite, a dad and his exposure, the political leanings and different, you know, the, the communist movement's exposure and also he could, you know, relate with, you know, what happened in Soviet Union, especially uh, uh, Trotsky, you might be aware, you know, that the very, the permanent revolution of uh, the Marxian version, which he, that was, you know, against Stalinism, you might be aware, got influenced by that. 1940s itself, you know, that A.R. Desai was, you know, that uh, applying in Indian context, you know, that that's under the banner called sociological background of Indian nationalism. Of course, you call social background of Indian nationalism. Because, you know, that uh, all, you know, that the conflict he could see uh, between you know, the two elites, but his concern was not in favor of the classes, you know, how the exploitation happened. Especially, you know, that the, when, how the British administration brought in, you know, that the capitalist mode of entity, all the pre, the capitalist mode of, you know, that the features available already, you know, that the very Indian context completely got destroyed by them. So, they were preparing the very India towards capitalistic mode, which is not free from, you know, that the exploitation. And also the zamindari, you know, all those, the land tenure handling, even the very cost he viewed, you know, that as exploitative character, especially the judgment system. So, applying, you know, that this particular principle, you know, that so the very Indian society with simmering discontent, contradictions, especially, you know, that uh, 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 based on the exploitative relationship on economic infrastructure. This is, you know, that because of that he was criticized, you know, you are completely, you know, that practicing, you know, uh, dialectical, historical, uh, you know, the uh, 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 method, uh, historical, you know, the determinism, economic determinism, dialectic, you know, that uh, uh, determinism. Dialectic materialism rather, because you know, completely based on ownership over material resources. It's not hobnobbing, contradiction, citation. That culminated that way. He gone to the extent of even accusing, you know, that uh, 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 you know, uh, the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi. He was quite silent in convincing the workers in favor of uh, 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 the very, you know, the factory owners. He gone to that extent. There is a judgment we are talking about that. So, this is different view from Indological perspective to structural functionalism perspective to applying Marxian, you know, perspective in Indian context. Because, you know, this struggle will, you know, that is what in India's path of development, having analyzed, you know, that the very India's independent struggle in five phases, he predicts, you know, that the future of India is going to be the capitalist nation with uh, not free from, you know, that all round exploitation and also communalism in place. That and all his prediction. Because that was criticized as Nostrum. That's totally different scenario. There is a trend. And also, you know, that very year, this I say, you know, Indian constitution, the, the myth of welfare state, he highlights. You know, that, but that's not happening, you know, that because given the fact, you know, why the very introduction of this, you know, that uh, 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 the Marxian approach in Indian society, when he was trying to understand Indian society, and, uh, you know, that that was outrightly rejected by British administration, you might be aware. And not only that, people were completely preoccupied with the notion of the euphoria because of the various plans, five-year plans we introduced. So, in 1940, when he was trying to, you know, introduce this contribution, you know, uh, no takers, people rejected this. But, of course, the situation happened later that facilitated him. 
that became you know in favor of ARJ because you know the failures of various planning missions people got disappointed and 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 widening social inequality even the green revolution we accused na you know though we may be talking about india attained self sufficiency in food grains not free from you know regional influences the regional differences you know that uh, 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 culminated because of green revolution widening inequality rich gets richer poor gets poorer and you know well that's why it was called you know that uh, it favored few crops the wheat revolution <laughs> brown revolution the widening inequality quite dangerous to social order that's why red revolution all uh, the brown revolution it is that way ladies and gentlemen so you know for every kind has got you know two sides it is that way so you know that probably you know that the very air they say took into account you know that other angles you know the marxian angle we are talking about so all these you know the failures you know that maybe because of bureaucracy or a ruling dispensation ultimately the situation became quite ripe especially in the 15th sociological conferences he reemphasized once again this so it started working that way so so understanding indian society from marxian perspective especially in terms of history of india is nothing but history of struggle struggle between haves and have nots especially to have control over economic resource that came struggle the india's independence struggle work was construed that way because you know local elites unable to control that time you know they they have they had fight with you know that uh, the very british elites they were thrown away but the, now the, the very you know independent india became open for you know that indian exploitation like you know that the indian elites exploitation that way that elitist approach okay. of course because of mahatma gandhi's indian struggle acquired you know the, the mass movement character that's totally different scenario from marxian perspective he applies that of course mahatma gandhi himself got influenced by you know the, the very russian of course soviet union you know revolution he brought you know that uh, 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 the mass solution for the the practices you might be aware it is that way. but but you know you can't you can't you know call him as a communist that's totally different scenario but you know even karl marx you know there was a prelims question this year also i used to emphasize in all my classes both karl marx and mahatma gandhi ji were dreamed of egalitarian society where everything is for everyone but gandhi ji took you know that ahimsa policy satyagraha whereas you know that karl marx took the path of you know of course you know well revolution where violence is not ruled out violence is the midwife of revolution you know uh, uh, mazedin also ruled with barrel and guns you might be aware where violence is not ruled out of course the radical revolution uh, the very karl marx you know spoke about this so the, the end is same both both you know that leaders you know that aimed at same end but different paths you might be aware it is german you have to understand so that's what the beauty of you know great leaders so everybody at the end of the day spoke you know the same end you will come to know so let's german it is that way so the various perspectives are born of contention ladies and gentlemen welcome to you know and academy this is success sampath you know interacting with you especially on you know the sociology thinkers portion having completed paper one thinkers we are now discussing you know that uh, indian sociologists indian social thinkers after indological perspective of gs guri structural functionalism of mn srinivas today we are discussing you know that uh, marxian tradition in indian society especially by a r desai you know the social background of indian nationalism you might be aware yes Yes, do do. You can reach me in Telegram using my ID, say Success Sampath or Sampath Thiruvengram. Even you please watch rest of the videos available from the beginning. Probably I assure you, you will get benefited. If you got any difference of opinion, you know, you please type. I am ready to personalize myself. I am ready to serve you there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to an academy once again. This is Success Sampath, especially on today's interaction, sociology, Indian sociological thinkers, A R Desai. Yes, that's a brief introduction. Of course, you know that. a uh, very sociology in all videos we are emphasizing the indian thinker syllabus we are going to witness and also how the questions are asked the upsc examination for this you know a r desai the indian uh, sociologist of course you know belonging to uh, the marxian tradition in indian society and also a r desai you know that socio uh, you know that background and his political leanings of course biography and his contributions social background of indian nationalism and and his exposure to india's independence struggle and also you know that his recommendation the india's path of development and finally we have to criticize no body is free from criticism in democracy including ar desai that's part of democracy ladies and gentlemen we are going to criticize on various grounds also finally what are all the resources you know that can be consulted to enrich your understanding to the next level ladies and gentlemen if you feel i'm going faster you please type 
uh, type you know that accordingly I will, I will alter my style of delivery ladies and gentlemen at the end of the day it should reach you the communication the purpose of the communication should get fulfilled ladies and gentlemen I think this is fantastic it's it's right time let me take you to the next level I think you know very well the sociology the study about society science of society you know systematic study integrated study you might be aware you know that uh, we, we spoke everything and not only that you know that very popular scoring because of its subject matter you are part of the society you are living with and in the name of sociology I am not teaching anything to you I repeat once again you know everything and my role is to connect your understanding with the different different you know uh, uh, happenings in your uh, society my role is to connect I repeat once again ladies and gentlemen what I am talking here of course you got everything about you know everything about society I am formalizing your understanding by supplying few nomenclature linking with different perspectives that's all I am not doing you know that uh, more than that because you know everything once you learn this subject you will agree at the end you know that that's I am I'm, I'm pretty sure about it ladies and gentlemen so and uh, the very syllabus of course this is what your syllabus in paper 2 of you know that uh, syllabus of uh, your sociology especially talking about Indian thinkers on Indian society here you know that you you take into account of course the, the, the very perspectives of you know that study of Indian society and Indology we spoke already textbook view structural functionalism field view direct observation especially derived from you know that social anthropology from Ratcliffe, Brown, Malinovsky, the village centric study you know that's microscopism from MN Srinivas of course Mysore Narsimha chair Srinivas and Marxist sociology A.R. Desai was trying to understand Indian society especially from Marxian perspective and, and, and focused on uh, the, the exploitation, simmering discontent, contradictions existing in the society between different sections of the society. I mean, they try to control, you know, that uh, uh, over economic resource. You know, very well. It is that way. So everything, you know, it is that prism of looking at things in terms of, you know, a conflict, antagonism, struggle that demands, you know, radical revolution. That's towards, you know, classless communist society. That is the political goal of. Marxism. He analyzed India's independence struggle in such a way from Marxian tradition. You know the well. That's what we briefed so far. And this and all the questions you got, you know, that in previous years' questions I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Critically evaluate Marxian analysis of Indian society. They are these size contribution. So this is how we are relevant today. Our, our today's session is highly relevant because of this particular, you know, that these are all the questions because original questions of UPSC, you know, that you should be focused now. I repeat once again, critically evaluate, don't leave even in the criticism, in depth, you know, that you are, you are going to be judgmental. <laughs> you, you, you get the support of, you know, that other perspectives people also, even uh, 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 Yogendra Singh, even structural functionalism perspective people, everybody will join you to criticize them. That's why critical evaluation especially on Marxian analysis. Even today, Marxian analysis is highly relevant. It is also not free from criticism. Especially, we are applying on Indian society. How A.R. Desai already did in terms of his contributions, we are going to just connect. Yes. And discuss the Marxist approach to the analysis of Indian nationalism. Of course, it is Indian society centric. This is, you know, that India's independent struggle centric question. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking this way. And analyze A.R. Desai's views on India's path of development. That's what I said, you know, the capitalist path we are heading towards that is highly relevant even today. That's what our leaning towards capitalist economy. That's why, you know, that the government is getting accused, the corporate driven politics, almost like falling in the toes of United States of America, you might be aware. And also, you know, that the ruling dispensation is not free from the accusation that even the India's foreign policy uh, uh, unable to come out of the clutches of domestic politics, that with all the criticism, the government is trying to fix it, whether it is citizenship amendment bill or national population register that has got you know the challenges at the national neighborhood first policy you might be aware and apart from that and recent report also you know that given covid situation we already got uh, uh, you know that uh, problem in terms of our economic aspect and that got worsened because of you know covid crisis in spite of atma nirbhar 20 lakh crores but recently you know you might be aware the imf you know that putting uh, the bangladesh you know that more than india in terms of economic development you might be aware that's a bad story and uh, uh, you know all these things you know that so so of course you know that our focus is somewhere so we have to correct we have to take nation to the next level of course 
let us let us join when we are talking that of course the global economy also you know that uh, 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 is recovering to some extent uh, uh, then we predicted you know that uh, worst scenario in the past so i think india's you know that uh, uh, gdp also will move to that level let's hope you know best out of our administration by our leaders of course ladies and gentlemen so the analyze ar desai's views uh, that's what you know the capitalism and communalism you know that and also associated exploitation and, and and the leaders coming together for the mass movement all these things he predicted then and there it's happening in different parts of india you know well just that way ladies and gentlemen so it is also relevant what he predicted uh, happening what marx predicted also happening but it's it, it can't be you know that it's it's not happening everywhere that's the point you got variants of marxism same way 100% it may not be happening you see relevant somewhere that is what the point of course all these questions for which you know that once i finish my discussion probably you can you are capable of answering all these questions that's the very purpose let us join it let me take you to the next level of course yes the biography Excuse me, please. One second. Tolerate me. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. So you know, I we told you many times, right? If you want to understand the ideas of, you know, uh, uh, every contributions of you know that, uh, every contribution of you know the sociology, you have to understand the historical truth. try to connect with you know the socio economic or political background of that particular contributor the sociologist social scientist who or maybe so that you understand better that the context when you understand the understanding ideas becomes you know that a simpler process it is german it is that way we are going to you know look at you know that his background the biography and his political leanings of course you know a r desai we are talking about who is this a r desai akshay raman lal desai you know belonging to the bombay school of sociology you know the line of you know he's also a student of uh, gs guri patrick gidas gs guri even mn shrinivas student of gs guri you know that so akshay raman lal desai a r desai in short we are talking especially in the 1915 you know we we celebrated uh, 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 the centenary celebration for this you know german of course you know you might be aware uh, uh, you know birth centenary especially so the history of development of sociology in india the contribution of ar desai who was born of course you know that 1915 you know that you know 2015 we celebrated you know there was a fantastic article in also the economic and political weekly the wonderful information but and we need some more sources also to meet out our syllabus and previous questions but that's good you know uh, uh, analysis you know especially from uh, uh, mumbai uh, uh, sociological world right you are aware Hope you would have gone through that article. I repeat, economic and political weekly. So, especially to commemorate that birth centenary of A. R. Desai. Ladies and gentlemen, he passed away, of course, at the age of you know that 1994. Now, we are talking about you know that 2015. We celebrated birth centenary. For your kind information, so it is that way. Even the questions you can predict in such a way. Any sociologist birth centenary or death anniversary, death centenary. You know whatever it may be that. that is what the uh, trend going on in general studies also you know in terms of institutions as we say food and agriculture organization 75th year india's contribution and uh, uh, united nation organization 75th year you know all the stuffs so it is the same way you apply here in indian sociologies let us join it is that way yes on the occasion of his near birth centenary that's what i spoke yeah, yeah, we look at if we look at contribution may be considered imperative essential the light of the growing dominance of western imprint on social purpose this is what he was very much worried um both gs guriye and his student of course mn shrinivas of structural functionalism gs guriye of indological perspective both were trying to give indigenized uh, version for sociology indigenized resources support you know that are delineate the subject matter of sociology but you know but when uh, uh, you know the very ar desa was trying to understand indian society especially from marxian perspective he could witness that you know complete indian society uh, 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 could witness you know that the impact of the western imprint maybe it is because of 150 years of roots of very british administration and prior to that when east india company even you know very well the european colonization poor in the front portuguese dutch english danish french all these people 
you know, the, the colonial parts. Of course, Western imprints. Okay. So that's, you know, that's true also. Akshay Ramanlal Desai, A.R. Desai, acquired inspiration to study and explore, explore you know, the, the facts about the very human society under the influence of his father, erudite, a scholastic father, Raman Lal, you know, Basant Lal, R.V. Desai. He is A.R. Desai and his dad, of course, R.V. Desai. We talk about, you know, the, who is also, you know, that well-known, well you know, that writer for your kind information, ladies and gentlemen. Is that what we are talking about? You know, when he was, you know, that in teens, he joined various social and, and political movements, you know, that, uh, you know, because, you know, uh, uh, 1915, you just imagine, you know, that his growth, you know, that the teenage coincided with, you know, that the very peak period of, you know, that India's independence. Growth. So naturally, you know, that you can't be free from that, you know, national mainstream or what's going on in your nation, the political awakening, the religious, social religious reform movements, you know, of course, and, and mass leadership by Mahatma Gandhi, you know very well. That was very, you know, that a, a serious attempt during those times. Of course, naturally he would have, you know, that participated, you know well. So especially the places like, you know, his political experiment, laboratories, of course, a place like, you know, Baroda, uh, Surat, Mumbai. Today, you know, that, of course, you know, that you talk about all those, you know, that when he was at, at yet to reach, you know, that, of course, you know, prior to 20, the emergence of socialism and its aftermath, especially in Soviet Union. Yes, to while Soviet Union, today you call Russia, after shattering of that Soviet Union, United States of Soviet, you know, Russia into the 1990s, you might get it. So, you know, well, now it is mere Russia only, but yes, while during Cold War era, we spoke about, you know, uh, a NATO pact, Warsaw Pact, USA and USSR, you know, the two polars, Cold War, two poles, polar, you know, bipolar world. We spoke, one of the polars, of course, you know, that yes, while, Soviet Union, we are talking about it, especially with regard to the immense power struggle within Communist Party. Even today in China, the immense power struggle happening within, you know, the Communist Party might be able to divert the attention. Now they are entering into India, you know, all those aggressive stands. Or it may be an excuse, we don't know exactly, various theories to prove. And given the fact that China, the Communist nation, uh, uh, and controlled media, no transparency, you know, whatever they say we have to believe. So, uh, the Communist Party of, you know, the, the Soviet Union impacted him and so much so that in the following years of his life, Desai became well-known follower of, you know, Leon Trotsky. I told you, he's, in, he's well known for, you know, the permanent revolution, pure Marxism. So, for the establishment of classless communist society, you know, because, you know, it's also, he was accused as if, you know, uh, uh, the bourgeois proletariat, bourgeois dictatorship, they don't want, you know, that's a criticism against Marxism also. See, Marxists, you don't want, you know, bourgeois proletariat, bourgeois, you know, the dictatorship, but you want, you know, proletarian dictatorship. From bourgeois, the capitalist dictatorship, you know, that you want to make the world by revolution, of course, where violence is not ruled out. You want to establish classless communist society, but where the rule by proletarian, of course, the rule or dictatorship by proletarian is not ruled out. That is the end of the society. That's what Marxism, the apocalyptic method. The primitive Asiatic, ancient, feudal, capitalistic, that is the thing. Of course, you know that this Trotsky is in Leon Trotsky in favor of the pure Marxism, the permanent revolution that is just against Stalinism. You might be aware. So, you just go through Russian revolution and everything, you will understand. So, this Trotskyism, the per favoring permanent revolution, pure Marxism, you know that of course, Marxism has got variants, variety of uh, uh, the multiple versions, you might be aware. Trotskyism influenced or, you know, A.R. Desai, you know, that the political leanings. And ultimately, you know, he became well-known Trotskyite Marxist and devoted his life, you know, on contribution in line with his belief and passion. You know, that they will be, you know, that the people are passionate in Communist Party, they will die as Communist Party, you know, well. The ideology they are wedded, you know, they will be very hardliners like, you know, very well you would have seen in your practical life also. So, his passion, you know, the belief towards Trotskyite Marxism, you know, very well. He continued, he devoted his life to that particular, you know, that uh, uh, ideology, that's, you, you know, well. So, in 1946, Desai graduated from Bombay University, especially as I told you, right, the G.S. Giri. Not only, you know, that here Desai, even Yemen Srinivas also, you know, that the, the research, you know, uh, uh, guide of Yemen Srinivas, G.S. Giri, you know, very well, you know, all those stuff. And G.S. Giri was, you know, that uh, uh, the Mumbai 
the sociological department that time you know that head of the department happened to guide you know when stuff so in 1947 he married of course er desai married neera ben desai became faculty of this is all the thing his exposure to the teaching world and 1948 we are talking about the publication of his magnum opus that's very famous you might say the social background of indian nationalism so this is what the bone of contention you please go through that book so uh, india's independence struggle has been you know discussed in five phases you come to know so that made him you know well known in the academic circles you now that got a lot of contributions there but you know as we say uh, uh, the caste and race in india for M. G. S. Guruji, remembered village for mn was monumental work same way for you know that a r desa you are talking about the social background of indian nationalism ladies and gentlemen right and uh, you know that 1949 of course publication of r p that you might be aware, you know, the, the, the founding of, you know, the communist movement in India, you know, very well, you talk about 1920s, you know, that here you are talking about R.P. Dutt's famous book titled India Today, of course, you know, that was able to introduce and popularize especially the historical or Marxist approach, you know, very well, we are talking about historical or Marxist approach. Why it was called historical approach? Because, you know, the, the Marxism tried to understand the whole society in terms of series of stages. In, in Karl Marx, it's you know the uh, contribution itself. We spoke about it: primitive, ancient, feudal, uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, the capitalistic society. Finally, establishment of classless communism. From primitive communism to the conscious establishment of classless communism. That's what you know the the Marxian path. You know well took into account the whole society in terms of series of stages. That's why it's called historical materialism. But simmering discontent between you know the two classes, haves and have-nots, in every stage of the society that is why it was called uh, uh, you know dialectic materialism one opposing another dialectism means you know well dialectism Hegel's, Hegel spoke about dialectic idealism Karl Marx spoke about dialectic materialism there is a German you know all those things so the Marxist approach of studying society in many people in many people you know that uh, uh, across the country began to assume these two books you might be aware especially the India today and, and historical are, are you know that uh, Marxist approach uh, you know that of studying society and many people across the country began to assume these two books you know could well provide the roadmap you know that to build socialism in India of course you know that they started believing A.R. Desai you know that and, and prior to that I said D.P. Mukherjee even R.P. Dutt's you know that the famous uh, book India today through the exposure of course we are talking about roadmap to build socialism in India but the idea you might be aware even Nehru got influenced by socialism of you know that USSR he brought to the core he never leaned towards United States of America you might be aware Nehru was happy comfortable with USSR then USA you know the story the statesman you know very well and India following the legacy of you know Karl Marx and also you know that you talk about Leninism it is German it is that way so roadmap to build socialism in India is that way as a matter of fact the decades subsequent to the emergence of you know that socialism in soviet union it was russian revolution 1917 that led to significant spread of socialism in many parts of the world including the countries of eastern europe you know even today you talk about na, all those eastern eurasia the portions they were you know that erstwhile uh, 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 the members of you know that ussr you might be aware you know, even ukraine you know that uh, romania ukraine you know that all those things you know you're talking about nations surrounding the very borders of you know that european continent and also the beginning of uh, 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 the west asia you talk about ladies and gentlemen the northern west asia especially is that way ladies and gentlemen let me take you to the next level yes the major contributions of this air this side under under different titles you call the social background of indian nationalism the rural sociology in india the slums and urbanization of you know that India you are talking about and state and society in India, the peasant struggle in India, see see the flavor of the very Marxism everywhere and, and he also wrote another contribution of course especially the 15th uh, uh, the sociological conference, the myth of uh, uh, the welfare state you know well right, the rural India in transition and India's path of development where he spoke about uh, the capitalistic model in India and associated issues the communalism, the mass movements, all those stuffs, you know, he predicted that is true also, it is relevant, you are talking about. Yes, India is noted that some of his writings, of course, you know, 
it is noted that some of his writings you know that may appear too sweeping and over generalized without taking refuge in studying the minutest details that what you know that the criticism you know that these air days are attracting you are you know you you took the lens of you know the marxism you started understanding indian society from that particular you know the cooling glass you started wearing marxism cooling glass you started looking at things you have to understand if you want to understand india thoroughly you have to understand uh, it is a, a predominantly hindu social organization majority hindus the very religion socio cultural structure in india and caste centric society by outrightly you know rejecting this socio cultural framework you, you, you know that you simply you know that uh, 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 position all your you know that uh, uh, theories only in terms of economic determinism that that may not be appropriate that's what the criticism you know that for this year you know that they are saying you might be aware and uh, without studying the minutest details of course that talks about you know the socio cultural pattern even the caste system you know this is all the things that's the criticism we are going to discuss at the end also you know his preoccupation with marxism or economic determinism or exploitation struggle change that way so the, the schools of you know that indian social thought you know what are all the sociological schools in india you know that you have to understand you know hitherto structural functionalism conflict school of thought symbolic interactionism we discussed in the paper 1 when we talk about paper 2 indian sociologists ideological perspective structural functionalism another one marxian perspective apart from that different different schools geographical uh, variations uh, the schools of thought you know that in, in in especially the sociological angle for your kind information we can group that way also so the classic indian sociology had declined in the last 100 years of the discipline you know that because you know that the, the contributions you know it is it's totally you know that what karl marx said right you know the people are running after Uh, the economic sense the technology uh, and the forgotten role of basic sciences and forgotten role of art subjects all where uh, where some of the you know social sciences you know that coming down might be aware and and even you know that uh, the political economy even in diplomacy economic diplomacy becomes famous so the world is running after material world huh? it is that way the materialism the globalization economic recession we are pre of course with materials only you can fulfill the needs that's totally different scenario uh, uh, that's why you know various indices that should be shipped from mere economic development to concomitant social development you are talking about even hdi uh, uh, the pakistan economist mohammad mul haq even amartya sen joining that even gross national happiness index we are talking about we are completely preoccupied with that uh, the particular you know economic determinism ladies and gentlemen we are talking that way of course right so it's it's vain of course you know that the last 100 years of you know that uh, the decline that you see the indian sociology was enriched by sociologists and social thinkers who are all they they are from different circle if you talk about lucknow school where you talk about radha kamal mugerji rk mugerji and uh, you know durjati uh, prasad dp mugerji that's what i say this dp mugerji introduce you know that this marxian version Uh, Marxian way of looking at Indian society prior to this year they say now for your kind information and also D N Majumdar there is generally they belong to Lucknow school of sociology and you got Calcutta school Calcutta school of course you know that uh, A K Datta you know that Akshay Kumar Datta we are talking about and and Binoy Kumar you know that Sarkar you know Binoy this is all the name itself you will come to know Calcutta and and Brijendranath you know that seal you know they belong to Calcutta school you should understand. as you got you know that in the united states of america of course you know that the chicago school of sociology where you talk about relate with you know that the very symbolic interactionism ha huh? yes you talk about it is that we learn in german so here too you have lucknow school calcutta school the city centric of course you are talking about the bombay school especially where you know that we said you know our ar desai belonging to this particular school of course the after patrick gedas g s guri you also add you know that ar desai that way the scholars of and scholars of rest of the scholars of subsequent generations ladies and gentlemen so the very schools of you know that indian social thought they talking this way it is that way you know that lucknow school calcutta school bombay school why you know that it is not See, actually surender singh this is meant for you know youtube session and uh, you know i'll be launching separately in plus program also for that you have to join plus program or iconi program where there will be complete course here you know that the the free sessions free sessions you won't be getting complete uh, syllabus only in plus program and iconi program you will be getting you know that the courses you know that launching of courses especially 
you know that made for the plus program or iconic program you please enroll subscribe from there you will get complete program do not worry about it you know that for sociology I will be handling especially English medium you know that so not for Hindi medium English medium pure English medium you know I will be handling you know you please talk to that you know download that talk to the people they will guide you I repeat once again plus program or iconic program you can use my referral code say success to avail you know the 10 percent discount there itself Surinder Singh you know that all complete programs you will get only when you subscribe but you got you know that a substantial portion free sessions available part of YouTube as well as you know part of uh, an academy learning app you please you know download you go through you will come to know if you want full course you have to enroll yourself subscribe the courses please enroll in plus program or iconic program and also they are talking about increasing our fees you know that you please you know that do it you know as 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 soon as possible you know that uh, so it works in your favor ladies and gentlemen it's that way right let me take you to the next level yeah we are talking about you know the indian schools of you know that uh, sociological thought we are talking about so apart from geographical region based schools of social thought there are several approaches you know that of studying indian society like diffusion diffusion means spread diffusion is school indological school you know very well you know gs gurie historical or marxist school we are talking about dp mugerji yar desai which began to, to subside gradually since independence of India, leading to remarkable development of sociology, but under the influence of ages of Western ideas and the preoccupation. When you talk about Western ideas, of course, you know that anthropological world, you know, structural functionalism, of course, Radcliffe, Brown, Malinowski, you go to, you know, United States of America, of course, where you bring, you talk about, you know, uh, Talcott Parsons, Robert Kimmerton of structural functionalism, that way. So, the western ideas and preoccupations, you know, seeping into, penetrating into the Indian sociological thought. So, rest of the ideas, you know, came down. This is reality, you have to understand. You as a civil service aspirant, nothing to do with all these things. Just understand, score, you know, that uh, 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 good marks, 450 plus out of 500, get good ranks, become officer. That, sh that should be, you don't worry. You are not, you know, that academician. Your role is to become officer. Right. The Department of Sociology. University of Bombay, of course, you call Mumbai now, started functioning, you know, that since 1919, the five years after the World War, of course, 1914, you know, very well. So, they are, they are positioning the contemporary, of course, the westernization of sociological thought of India was found to be so profound, the department, you know, I, and, and that of many little tradition, you know, what is Milton Singer, Mackey Marriott, you will come to know, you know, that a lot of Indian sociologists. Uh, uh, we are talking about, you know, little tradition, great tradition, a particular practice, cultural practice, even, you know, institution-based practice, social institution-based practice, religious practice, uh, practice over a small area by, by you know, small-sized population, little tradition. When it is embraced by the global community over a large area, it becomes great tradition. From When you move from little to great tradition, you move from parochialization to universalization, parochialization to generalization or universalization. You, you come to know in, in Yogendra Singh, you know, that modernization of Indian tradition, we will be speaking more. When you, when you talk about, you know, social change, we are going to discuss those ideas also. Let us limit to this little tradition. You know, of course, the department, you know, that, that many of the little tradition, which could emerge in the course of development of, you know, that sociology, in the first part of this time period was unable to snowball, you know, that uh, to acquire further momentum. You know, that something happened. But that did not move ahead, you know, that we are talking about, whatever may be. So, the westernization of sociological thought was having profound impact in the department of literal tradition that you take into account, the influence of western uh, sociological thought. Instead of, you know, that uh, instead the sweep of westernization, of course, you know, that what is westernization? Aping the West. Even MN was, you know, pet concepts, you might be aware of the famous phraseologies, westernization, Sanskritization addressing when you are trying to understand you know the change in Indian society you address cultural change through westernization and Sanskritization. Westernization is all about aping the West, copying the West, imitating the West, Western lifestyle, humanitarianism, rationalization, just that way, you know, westernization. So the sweep of westernization because 150 years of British rule in India, that is why the westernization, the western impact, you have to understand. The sweep of westernization was so domineering that the indigenous traditions which had been intrinsic feature of you know Indian sociology began started yielding how began to succumb the pressure of you know the westernization or and perish gradually is that way 
you know, as I speak English, my dress, all over art and architecture, the influence. Yes, definitely. Nobody is free from influence. But in Indian context, as said by Yogendra Singh, the modernization of Indian tradition, in India, it's unique uh, structure, unique feature, the characteristic feature of Indian society, where you see both traditionalization and modernization working in parallel, side by side. That is what we are talking about, ladies and gentlemen. It's that way. So, the, the historical or Marxist approach of studying society as envisaged by Desai was no exception. It also, you know, that yielded to the, the, the very pressure of westernization, you know, that started perishing. That is what the meaning, you know, that. So, that is the thing, you know, that uh, what idea dominates in a particular. For every thesis, you got antithesis. Then there will be synthesis. The very historical or Marxian ideology, you know, that. So, along with the discipline of sociology and, you know, that. And they started yielding to the pressure of westernization. Otherwise, you see in Indian sociological thought the presence of the western domination. That way, yes, as a result, despite his, you know, that remarkable contribution, he is now an almost forgotten figure in the, in the annals of Indian sociology, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, 2015, you know, that we could see, you know, that uh, uh, the very birth centenary, you know, that you might be aware, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about, of course. Right, and the, the very research, of course, you know, article I said mentioned in the Economic and Political Weekly, you know, the very magazine, it's available in the net. You just go through, you, you get more. Yes. After the completion of the World War II, about one third of you know the world's population lived in socialist countries. You just imagine the difference between you know world 1917, the World War One and World War Two. So one third of the world countries, you know, the world's population lived in socialistic country. You know, the the Marxian version, you might be aware, the very ideology. The establishment of classless communist society, but you don't find pure Marxism everywhere. All are variants of Marxism, tampered version of Marxism. You know, China is a communist country, but they've got classes. <laughs> and they won't allow even simple protest. How come you can think about you know the very revolution? But it is not after seeing uh, uh, the capitalist society, they have moved to that you know establishment of classless communist society. The peasant society itself they embraced communism, you know well. Uh, you know, uh, the Karl Marx itself, we explained to you, is that way. So, one third of world countries, you know, uh, uh, the world's population with, you know, socialistic countries, you might be aware. So, apart from Im remarkable emergence of the very socialism in several parts of the world, the weakening of British monopoly, the colonization era gone, you know, when, the weakening of, you know, because, you know, uh, throughout the world, they were widening tentacles, the very birth of American civil war, you might be aware, you know, all those stuff. So, you know, uh, uh, from down to dusk, you know, that you travel in their lands, you might be aware. So, the British monopoly power led to remarkable, you know, the, the, you know the, that people got affected by their colonization. There came, you know, ultimately anti-colonial, anti-imperial struggles. And, you know, that Afro-Asian countries, you know, even the very birth of non-aligned movement, Afro-Asian countries, they don't want to see the imperialism once again. Anti-imperialistic, anti-colonial. You know, uh, 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 the, the neo anti neoliberal also, you know, well, so the very formation of non aligned movement. The same way, the remarkable growth of anti colonial, anti imperial struggles in many countries of Asia, Africa, and, and South America, Latin America, too. Ladies and gentlemen, the deep interest of, you know, that A.R. Desai with regard to the growth of Indian nationalism. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about the all the PPDs, what we are discussing for optional subject, it's not like, uh, uh, you know, that a routine, uh, the regular what we do with, you know, the general study. Because normally this is not the way of presenting PPD, let me say once again. Because, you know, but we, 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 we have to give only words, few words, not this much of paragraphs and all. But we are very conscious why we are giving, you know, uh, uh, the very best phraseology, the key words. You know, I want, you know, that you to get exposed. That's the very purpose. So, then only you, you get the core of, you know, the concepts. That is the very purpose of giving so that, you know, your writing becomes better. You understand, you deliver, you use all those keywords. That is the very purpose. We can't compromise. It is not simply saying, you know, that so you will listen and you will forget later. So, you watch parallel stays with you, registers in you, you know, that so that, so that that transforms you. That is what the very purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, so the deep interest of Desai with regard to the growth of Indian nationalism would snowball into, you know, that uh, due to contemporary social situation of then India. The situation happened in India in such a way, the India's independent struggle. You know that this Desai, passionate about, you know, Marxism, 
and you know the, you know the influence of you know that uh, the trotsky uh, marxism especially uh, influenced by soviet union you might be aware so the growth of you know that indian nationalism could snowball into uh, uh, due to the contemporary social situation you know that in, in the then india after all india also witnessed the weakening of the very british power you might be aware we were about to you know send them yeah, uh, india about to get you know independence that is the situation you know that uh, india about to come out of the colonization from the clutches of exploitation and the economic imperialism you know it is that way so the, the social background of indian nationalism he made a classical analysis about the genesis of indian nationalism you know that from a social perspective by adopting marxian approach historical determinism historical materialism or dialectic materialism of marxism otherwise the historical approach you know that he took into account you know that the contemporary from there the nationalist orientation in indian society argued that indian national movement was a popular movement of various classes you might be aware you know that that's what you know people cutting across all walks of life different religions different caste people and uh, you know that uh, different class even ethnicity came together and that's why it became you know mass movement especially under the leadership of you know mahatma gandhi ji we are talking about so national orientation indian society argued that indian national movement was a popular movement of various classes you know ar desai has got different op different opinion with this you know it was a product of according to ar desai it was a product of educated middle class the people who got exposed to the western you know that education you know the liberty equality fraternity the freedom loving the intellectual mindset you know that that they cannot be you know that manipulated that attitude so they wanted the freedom here but when india was under the clutches of british rule you know they can't enjoy so all those all round you know restriction you know that no press freedom you might be aware so that favored only british administration but went against indian if whether even you are educated so it immediately affected their sentiments all these things we are talking about ladies and gentlemen but it was a product of educated middle class so indian national movement is not you know that cutting across you know that the various classes people came together to give you know that national movement a mass movement a popular movement but it is it was the product of educated middle class which was the prime factor responsible for indian independence because the, the struggle the conflict between you know that indian western educated intelligentsia versus you know that uh, the british elites british ruling elites british colonizers here that culminated of course you know gandhi uh, our, our mahatma gandhi pandit nehru even sardar vallabhbhai patel you know all are uh, the barristers you might be aware you know prior to that the grand old man of india dada bhai nawaz the 19 you know the 34 and and you know uh, 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 he highlighted about you know the the brain drain theory you might be aware so all western you know that educated intellectuals intellectuals no doubt at all so the product of you know it's it's according to ar desai to be precise the indian national movement was a product of educated middle class which was the prime factor responsible for india's independence so that's their opinion you know of course it is that the, the version the perspective the marxian perspective of ar desai this class this educated middle class converted the freedom struggle into mass struggle of course where you bring gandhi here nehru here sardar patel here you know pandit nehru everybody it is that way you know it is that way you know that we are talking about ladies and gentlemen let me take you to the next level the politics of mass line mass emancipation otherwise you know the mass participation you call that will be appropriate was gandhi's definite you know that a gift to india's freedom movement of course you know the south africa natal especially that became his political laboratory he practiced you know that uh, and helped uh, 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 the black people to fight for their own liberation you know very well you know that of course he could inspire and nelson mandela you know that african gandhi african national congress you know well all those stuff uh, we are talking about it is that way so there uh, uh, when he was thrown out of you know the vintage train you know that uh, uh, mahatma is born you know the story ultimately so from there he came to india that's what even today you celebrate pravasi bharatiya divas day you know gandhi's entry into india from south africa it is that way so you know the, it's a gift when gandhi entered into india's independence struggle it became mass movement it is a gift to you know that india's freedom movement uh, you know that a single uh, individual could give you know that uh, a mass leadership and that too with satyagraha himsa a tool which brought down the mighty british empire you know well all those stuff so which was unable to you know that uh, come across prior to you know that the freedom movement which was unable to come across prior to gandhi's appearance the scene of indian politics ladies and german you have to understand 
it never became mass movement. You know, people got uh, the oneness. Uh, as one nation, the nationalism consciousness never came, but British, you know, came through their exploitation, they, you know, that, uh, uh, the unintended consequences, you know, that brought uh, uh, the victims together, the victims of exploitation, colonial exploitation. So, there came uh, the nationalism spirit, one nation, but the mass movement, you know, that the character uh, came to India, especially the India's independence struggle under British rule, because of the entry of Mahatma Gandhi, that's the greatest gift you might be ever. Prior to that, it wasn't there. That's the point. But it needs to be borne in mind that the politics of masculine did have its finest expression, the form of Bolshevik revolution. Same thing, you know, the people brought, of course, the radical revolution, throw away, mass movements, they're talking about leading to the formation of socialism in USSR. The very Bolshevik revolution led to, you know, that the establishment of socialism in USSR, especially, you know, that uh, uh, in, the, in the world. First time in the world we are talking about in Soviet Union, then USSR you are talking about, you call Russian Revolution 1917. The same way, the mass movement here in India led to India's independence struggle. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about this way. Is that, I think that is appropriate. And Gandhi perhaps, you know, borrowed the idea from Lenin and implemented Leninism, of course. But whereas A.R. Desai, you know, that we are talking about Trotsky Marxism, the permanent revolution, you might be aware. So, uh, the Leninism and, and implemented in Indian context, you know, that following peaceful means, ladies and gentlemen, you know, that you know very well, everything won by state, the state will be run by people, you know the stories, even the Leninism, Stalinism, you know, all those stuffs, ladies and gentlemen. So, Desai did question, A.R. Desai did question the fundamental motive, the fundamental motive, of course, we are talking about, yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, the fundamental motive of uh, Gandhian politics and he expressed his, you know, that the candid doubt. Let me repeat once again. So, A. R. Desai did question the fundamental motive of Gandhian politics and express his candid doubt. You know, why you did, as we doubt, you know, the British colonization here, not for creating welfare state. To exploit India, Indian resources, so as to feed their own industrialization in Europe, you might be aware. The same way, this A.R. Desai actually, you know, question the fundamental motive behind, you know, Gandhian politics and its mass, mass movement and express his candid doubt whether the class collaborationist approach of Gandhian politics could, could rescue the common Indian masses from the abject exploitation and misery which capitalism is bound to inflict upon. Question Gandhi. Gandhiji, what is your motive? Of course. It is not questioning directly, you know that of course we are talking about it this way. So, Gandhiji's politics, you know that he questioned, you know that and expressed his candid doubt whether the class collaborationist approach, you know this is class, multi class of people coming together and making it a mass movement, for what purpose you come together, you know the, the Gandhian politics it was called, could rescue, are you going to rescue the common Indian masses from the abject exploitation and misery? Which, which, you know, that more than British people, the very capitalism of the British people, you know, that inflicted. Even today, that's what, you know, that in India's path to economic development, the capitalism will always bring, you know, inflict upon people the very exploitation because the tendency of, you know, capitalism, you know, is to, is to earn profit. Might be aware. So, India now embracing, you know, the capitalistic path, you know, of course, even the globalization be accused in such a way, but, you know, that widening inequality, rich gets richer, poor is poor getting poorer or at the cost of domestic. Otherwise, you know, is it uh, uh, globalization itself, you know, recolonization 2.0 invented by the very developed countries so as to exploit the resources of developing underdeveloped world. This is all the questions we are raising under the banner of, you might be aware, the very globalization. So is globalization a recolonization? All, all international institutions, you know, that in the name of multilateral treaty, trying to go against sovereignty of independent nation. These are all the questions we pose. Same thing, you know, that so, he doubted Gandhian's, you know, mass movement. Is it going to rescue common masses from the abject exploitation and misery? And misery, of course, you talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, so that why? It's because of the capitalism always bound to inflict, you know, that upon all these issues. Ladies and gentlemen, so Desai, A.R. Desai mentioned how Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi used to cajole <laughs> uh, the industrial, you know, that uh, workers to maintain peace and tranquility, you know, that you please maintain peace. Despite being mercilessly, they were exploited by the factory owners. He spoke in favor of industrial capitalism. Gandhi, you know, at the Birla house, he used to stay. 
for sponsorship novel maybe you know he spoke in favor of you know that the very industrial workers you know uh, you know that 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 thing you know of course because basically marx is they are against you know that the capitalistic management novel they will speak always in favor of workers because of exploitation because of the surplus theory you know that because of the inherent uh, simmering discontent contra contradiction based on economic exploitation how trying to right the how not you know the story so their sympathy is always with working class not with owning class capitalist class. so naturally a r desai it is that way ladies and gentlemen so a r desai mentioned how gandhi used to you know that uh, uh, cajole the industrial workers to maintain peace and tranquility despite being mercilessly exploited by the factory owner so this is the thing and you know that he mentions about gandhi and and uh, gandhi used to say look workers you need to obey the factory owners as you obey your parents it is your imperative responsibility i am not speaking bad against gandhi this is according to air desai ladies and gentlemen he is the father of nation i know <laughs> you know it's not speaking against gandhi but it is a perspective that is part of democracy in democracy criticism is part there is a saying in tamil i told you kural idipara illa yemara mannan kedupar illanum kedup that's a criticism meaning is that even if you, you may be a king but there should be someone to you know that you know that suggest you something alternative criticize you and you know that if it is right if it is going to be constructive so there you alter you know nothing is absolutely correct nothing is absolutely wrong in this world perspectives differing from from person to person place to place time to time what is right today tomorrow it may be wrong what is wrong today tomorrow it may be right this too shall pass because change is constant you know the change is constant that's what karl marx <laughs> in tamil there is a saying maradadu maatram ondru dan we ready for change ladies and gentlemen nothing is permanent so because you know that the, the very change itself will undergo change even the essence of bhagavad gita also that is emphasized <laughs> nothing is permanent ladies and gentlemen is that way so he used to say look workers you need to obey the factory owners as you obey your parents it's your imperative responsibility to develop the consciousness of common trusteeship by joining the hands of the factory owners to ensure higher yield your time work in such a your hard work and uh, you know that uh, you, you make him see profits work in favor of owners maybe he would have preferred hobnobbing relationship which is free from conflict so that that pulls them down that that pulls you know industrialists the indian industries probably that could have been who knows the, the, you know it's not questioning uh, uh, i can't question you know uh, what i'm sharing only desai's the marxian tradition of you know that indian sociology a r desai you know that the view over the gandhi you know that that's the, the very article speaks economic political weekly you know that you you will come to know so however gandhi did not say anything about the rightful claim of the workers no there were there are very factory ahmedabad mill workers keda satyagraha you know well he fought for you know that we read history that way but somewhat you know that we don't know reality history is nothing but history of few individuals we don't know but this is yar desai's opinion version you have to take into that way you know even you, the movie you watched hera how it portrays fantastic siddharthan uh, mr siddharthan you you rightly put it maradadu maatram ondru dhan maatram ondre maradadu you know that maatrame maanudu tattvam kannadasan birthday today maatram ondru dhan maanudu tattvam he also emphasized that ladies and gentlemen it is that way you know that people from other states you know that we are emphasizing the spirit of karl marx in tamilian uh, a tamil version don't worry the spirit remains same so a or desai used marxist approach and i'll come back to this point gandhi did not say anything about rightful claim of the workers to get higher wage and perks in lieu of you know that higher factory production we are talking about he, he never spoke in favor of that's that's his accusation of course right ar desai used marxis approach to study indian nationalism the approach that's what we are talking now he advocated ar desai advocated that the changing economic infrastructure of the society indian society under british rule led to the emergence of new classes english educated classes you might be aware the class conflict accordingly and social change happened you know that that's what you know india's independence struggle the social change and and which is the cause of indian nationalism you know that how you know it's that way so the economic infrastructure is the root that reflects class relations 
the relationship is in terms of struggle, antagonism, conflicting, exploitative. That led to revolution, radical revolution, the India's independence struggle. Let us judge it that way. So he's linking, you know, the social background of Indian nationalism. We are talking about under A or De Soil. Let us judge it that way. So he analyzed, he analyzed, you know, that the very class character. He analyzed the very class character of, you know, that Indian national movement in terms of economic, you know, the uh, developments of colonial period, such as the rise of land tenure system, you know, very well, Jamindari, Rayatwari, Mahalwari, you know, different, different, you know, the pattern you might be aware. So, the, the very land tenure systems, the industrial capitalism, factory based, based mode of production and the development of, you know, the market based society, market driven society, all these things, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about, it is that way. You know that uh, 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 the Indian national movements, you know, with which he identified uh, uh, the the situation ripe for applying the Marxian tradition, and especially uh, the inherent inherent, you know, that contradictions, you know, that discontent. We are talking about it is that way because of the exploitation happened. So the bourgeois, of course, capitalist class, the bourgeois leadership, the ownership, the, the bourgeois leadership of the movement fought uh, 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 to shape the movement. To suit their own interests at the cost of interests of the masses. So, what happened, right? See, we don't want British colonization, exploitation. We want to exploit our own masses. You go away. <laughs> you know, the conflict between two different elites, Western educated English elites, uh, 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 you know, elite classes and, and versus the, the British colonizers. So, we will exploit our people. You don't do. That's what we are doing now. Huh? Our corporate people, our leaders are doing exploiting us now. The masses, right? And India, even today, it's said to be, you know, that it's widening social inequality. Almost 10% of the population owning 90% of the resources at the global level also. The corporate driven politics we are talking about. We are unable to, you know, fix even today, you know, that lot of social issues. Though governments are trying very hard, apart from, you know, economic, uh, the global economic recession, subprime lending crisis, various reforms we introduce and it shocks the short term, of course, it's going to benefit long term. But the thing we are talking about now, even the situation now getting worsened because of the COVID crisis. Yes, and and it's not a policy a paralysis. It is paralysis of implementation, the corruption and other social evils, social issues, centrifugal tendencies, the challenges. Apart from external challenge, you know, the internal challenges we are talking about. So, the bourgeois leadership of the movement fought uh, uh, to shape the movement to suit their own interests, the cap, to suit their own, you know, that elites or capitalistic or capitalist people of India, you know, that Indian capitalists. And it's it's at the cost of interest of the masses. It's not favored masses. Of course, India got independence, but it's a failure of you know four and a half decades failure of the the, the bureaucratic mechanism. Uh, uh, we did not you know immediately benefit. So we started correcting very late. You know, all those, you know, that uh, 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 red tape is some procedural delay, corruption and uh, widening social inequality and also, you know, the old wine in a new bottle. Of course, we had democracy, the monarchy in the, in the dynasty rule, everything we were talking about. So, the, the political distractions we had at the emergency era, you know, all those stuffs and, and Garibi Hatawa, you know, the poverty, uh, uh, you know, the, the hunger, poverty, famine, everything we spoke. Is that way, ladies and gentlemen, so the bourgeois leadership of the movement fought to shape the movement to suit their own interest. It is at the cost of interest of the masses, the people, the common populace. Ladies and gentlemen, so Desai advocated that India's, you know, that the freedom struggle was basically the result of the fundamental contradiction or disagreement between the interest of the Indian people on the one hand, especially Indian elites, and, and the British colonialism on the other. The contradiction, economic, over economic interest, over ex economic exploitation especially. It's that way, you know, that the, the, the essence of the Marxism is applied here by A.R. Desai. Of course, in Indian context, that's relevant also, you know, that you have to understand because every coin has got two sides, ladies and gentlemen. So, he claimed that those classes, you know, that, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly, you know, that it happens everywhere, not only restricted to Tamil Nadu, you know, that uh, uh, overall we are talking about, you know, that, of course, irrespective of the political parties, you know, that uh, hope. Our leaders will understand the scenario. So the, he claimed, Yar Desai claimed that those classes supported the British rule, you know, that uh, which benefited from it. Of course, you know that what happened? The Indian elites, you know, they're hobnobbing with you know that the Western elites, of course, European elites, of course, the British elites, the colonizers, you know, they started exploiting our own masses, you know, very well. 
a new class called rentier class you know story what happened right you know that so you know the story uh, whereas other interests you know that the clash with british rule uh, you know that uh, uh, the, the support at the freedom struggle ladies and gentlemen that the peasants the tenants and indian capitalists we are talking about he claimed those classes support the british rule which benefited from it you know that you know those were all supporting the british rule they benefited whereas others you know that who opposed or whose interest clash with the british rule you know that but they supported the freedom struggle especially who all they the peasants tenants and indian capitalists you know that some those days you know that tata birla you know that how they you know that did for nation nations development you know uh, they they cooperated in so many ways you might be aware you know that that's that's true you know that there are the patriotic indian national even today you talk about the, the very uh, integrity based you know that tata enterprises you know that once interview you know that they asked you know that how come you know that you are uh, uh, ratan tata and here is ambani you know that you know we are actually industrialists they are business people that's what the statement made by ratan tata you know that about when when he was compared with the tata enterprises compared with the reliance industries you might be aware the difference between industrialists and business people of course you know we had industrialists Uh, based value system to support indian causes you might be aware ladies and gentlemen it's that way so thus indian nationalism was strongly influenced by the social background of the people involved in the freedom struggle who are all they the english educated the western educated intelligentsia you know of course you know that so there are also two categories one supported british colonizers colonizers one supported you know that indian masses and india's independence uh, 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 you know the for freedom otherwise you know that you might be aware so desai a or desai argues that the basic character of indian national movement throughout its career remain bourgeois is it what i'm talking about ladies and gentlemen so the basic character of indian national movement throughout its you know that the full swing you know that it's bourgeois centric bourgeois in the sense you know ownership Uh, the capitalist owner you know the, it was it, it was not you know the mass centric bourgeois centric that is what you know this is justification he is not ready to accept that the mass movement is that way it is elitist that's the color ladies and gentlemen so they saw in his book social background of indian nationalism of course you know that uh, uh, 1948 you know that did not discuss the class concerns because you know that of indian nationalism that rendered you know that the freedom movement you know that elitist but you know he he took it to that way you know that they say you know that it's the, it's not a mass movement it's elitist you know that the top class people you know that who had their own uh, you know that uh, 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 connivance with you know that the very british colonizers that way ladies and gentlemen we are talking about i think it is that way so he had limitless you know that uh, uh, trust in socialism might be aware you know that So very A R Desai had trust in socialism and believed that socialism is a panacea solution. You know, it is going to address all these issues. You know, to allay all allay all social problems plaguing capitalism. You know that you know because the establishment of classless communist society is a solution for the exploitative. You know that the capitalist society. That's according to Karl Marx. Same is the principle they are applying here. Ladies and gentlemen, not more than that. It is that way we are talking about. Ladies and gentlemen. that tendency you know that it's fantastic i think let me take you to the next level yes so in his entire life you know that whatever he could write you know that his one point obsession remained with the abolition of capitalism in place you know that he favored the rise of our, our presence of you know that very socialist you know that so abolition of capitalism and the establishment of classless communist society so that is what marx is normally you know that the political goal of marxism So A R Desai naturally, as a Marxian, belongs to Marxian tradition. Naturally, he will speak this way. So, in 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 his another well-known you know book, especially you know that Rural India in Transition, so the 1979, or you know that in his book titled State and Society in India, especially essay on descent 1975, he has analyzed how the path of development, the path of development and planning followed in Indian society. You know that where he got frustrated in 1940s. You know all his contributions. Uh, on the one side it was rejected by british colonization on the other side the people were under you know that uh, uh, india got you know that independence they were under euphoria that all these plans independence euphoria plans going to fetch us that thing this thing so he could not do anything 70s in the 70s the failure of all this planning the developmental activities in india people got frustrated the widening social inequality that time people started recognizing 
you know, that it became quite relevant, you know, that that's what the 15th, you know, the sociological conference where he spoke there. So, he's yet another insightful work title, the India's path, we are going to elaborate this also, India's path of development in 1984, he showed how the role of Indian government, you know, the provided to be miserable, you know, that and coercive, how, you know, that, you know, that the control, even Indira Gandhi was, you know, the equator, you know, the 42nd constitutional amendment, the fight between DPSP and FR, you know, very well, even emergency era, how the dictatorship, like, you know, the characteristics, you know, that, uh, uh, the, you know, that uh, former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was criticized those days, the emergency era of excessiveness, and, you know, uh, the, the forced family planning, you know, associated violence, even, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the Khalistan movement, you know, she went against and, you know, all those stuffs ultimately we are talking about. But every leader has got, you know, his or her own justification during the rule. But of course, the interpretations are many. But of course, you have to understand it. So, the role of Indian government proved to be miserable. Whereas you hear this in general, what we are talking, it's not our political opinion. They are their size opinion. You have to take into account from Marxian perspective. Ladies and gentlemen, you try to understand Indian society as they are their side, try to understand Indian society, applying Marxian tradition. You have to look at from that particular prism. Okay. Don't, don't get biased, don't get influenced, look at from angle, that particular angle. Yes, why he identified India, why he identified India as a capitalist country, despite the presence of several stark features of colonialism and feudalism. There is a question, you know, that you can pose, you know, why AR these are identified India as a capitalist country, you might be aware. Because, you know, because of British colonization, they took the nation to the capitalistic establishment. All their pre-colonial, you know, the, the pre-capitalist features, you know, that we had once completely, you know, that was destroyed by the policies of exploitation. That's why, you know, that they took us to the level of capitalist country, no doubt. Now also we are leaning towards more of capitalism, you know, very well. <laughs> That's a different scenario. So, this I promptly replied, those were pre-capitalist, you know, that those were the pre-capitalist features that could be present, but these were on the vein, you know, what happened, right, you know, that that came down. And the economy, you know, that, uh, uh, le you know, that leading towards capitalism, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about, you know, that so all those pre-capitalists, of course, you know, that you are talking about monarchical features, the, uh, uh, relatively socialist features, you know, completely destroyed. But prior to, you know, that arrival of East India Company, of course, you know, British administration, we never had, you know, that one nation, you might be aware. So, all, you know, princely states, you know, that the Mughal rules, of course, you know, well. So, but there are reasons to argue that he described Indian economy, you know, with such nomenclature, the names, different, different names, in order to draw an easy and swift transition from, you know, that capitalism to socialism. That is, gentlemen, we are talking about this, you know, the, the shift, the transformation, we are talking about it is that way. So, he used only different phraseology using, you know, that Marxian tradition. I think it is right time. Let me take you to the next level. Yes, this is India's path of development, you know, excuse me. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this is Success Sampath interacting with you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcoming you to An Academy once again. We are discussing, you know, Indian sociologists after G.S. Guri, you know, that the very immense universe. Today we are discussing, you know, uh, uh, the Marxian tradition in Indian sociology, especially by A. or Desai. Ladies and gentlemen, so uh, it is India's, you know, that the path of development. A. or Desai has applied a dialectical approach. You know, what do you mean by dialectism? Study of contradiction, because the Marxian version is otherwise called dialectical materialism, historical materialism, we spoke already. Dialectism is study of contradiction, one opposing you know, Because, you know, Karl Marx said the history of either to all existing societies full of struggle, struggle between haves and have-nots, antagonism, class struggle, right. So, this contradiction, simmering discontent in Indian society, he applied the Marxian, you know, dialectical approach in his sociological studies in Indian society. That's his laboratory. So, on the lines of Marxian view, also thinks that the property relationship is at the core of everything. <laughs> Money is the matrix. That's what Karl Marx. Hmm? If you try to earn one rupee from you know somewhere, you will understand the relationship. A guy who is giving one rupee to you is called owner. The moment you get one rupee, you become worker. 
the relationship back. Capitalist versus proletarian. Bourgeois versus proletarian. Capitalist versus worker. Haves versus have not. It is that way. So it is that way. So uh, things, the property relationship at the core of everything. Even today you talk so between brothers, sisters, you know that you see the property based, you know that uh, 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 misunderstanding. Whatever may be the size of the resources. Uh, uh, they, they, they are very hobnobbing, hobnobbing, you know that fantastic. When their uh, fathers, you know, that the parents are alive, you know, once they grow after a certain uh, period, you know, that the, the disputes, everything based on, you know, that uh, sharing of property, everything, the private property consciousness, the notion, let me have everything, let me take away everything attitude. So, that, that leads to, of course, you know, that. so, you know, well, so that greediness will always be there on the part of, you know, that the house, uh, the capitalist class, because that's based on surplus theory. That, that, that's never going to bring, you know, that justice. So, that's why the economic exploitation leading to struggle. The, the conflict we are talking about, it is that way. So, as and when private property is there, ladies and gentlemen, it will lead to exploitative relationship only. That the day when private property consciousness entered, there came struggle, there came conflict, there came antagonism, there came exploitation. Because the pure communist society, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the primitive society is called pure communist society. Yes, where everything is for it. They won't say it's my tree, it's my animal, because the whole tribal people, native indigenous people were tribal, you might be aware. The original inhabitants, where everything is for everyone. Over the days, you started practicing settled agriculture, agriculture society, land became bone of contention, land based ownership. Then, ultimately, with surplus of that agriculture production, you started establishing factory based mode of production. Yes, capitalistic. It is that way, you know, that ultimately profit centric. So, the exploitation got, you know, that a sharper, that's why alienation, Karl Marx speaks that way. So, as the as and when the private property consciousness is there, it will lead to exploitative, you know, I, I will take away everything, that attitude comes in, it's over. So, uh, uh, then it is, it's, it's going away from the justice, social justice, it is that way. So, there won't be hobnobbing, there won't be consensus. Then that, that, that leads to disputes entering into courts, you know, that's what happening, struggle, exploitation, antagonism, everything. So, uh, it is that way, ladies and gentlemen, he envisaged, contemplated that Indian nationalism is a product of material condition. Now that India's material conditions, you know, the created by British colonialization or colonialism and it did not exist in the British, you know, that era. You know, that it is they came here, they established, they exploited our resources. And ultimately created the material condition situation to have control over that. There came the fight between the Western educated, you know, Indian, Indian intelligentsia, Indian elite, a section of Indian elites on the one hand versus the British colonizers. That is the way. It is not the struggle between Indian masses versus British colonizers. This is according to Air Desai, the Marxian tradition. It is a struggle between, you know, that uh, 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 two exploiters, <laughs> the Western educated, you know, that Indian elites who want to exploit Indian resources, you know, the versus British exploiters. And there were Western educated, you know, that Indian uh, capitalists also with, you know, that the, uh, in favor of India, in favor of uh, uh, India's independent struggle, mass movement, as I said, you know, the Tata and Birla, those people, you know, that you might be aware. It is that way, those days I am talking about. Today's corporate is totally different, you know, well, you know, you apply. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that way. So, he and uh, lobby, quid pro quo, corporate driven politics we are talking today. But not of that industrialist. So he envisaged, you know, that the nationalism in India is a product of material conditions created by British colonialism, and that did not exist in the pre-British. The, the moment the private property entered the exploitative relation, the idea, na? even Robert Clive, you know, that how a scandalous, corrupt guy who came and rose to the great levels, you know, that you know very well. It's all, it's all, it's all the story. There is a gentleman, is that way we are talking about. So, the, the British rule simultaneously led to the disintegration, we are talking about, you know, British rule simultaneously led to uh, the disintegration of, you know, the economy and several other, you know, it is exploited, it is destroyed, the cottage based domestic industries you might be aware, in place they brought factory based mode of production, you know, ultimately, so that favoured them and, you know, our, our economy, you know, that uh, uh, got reduced to the level in such a way. Uh, to feed their industrialization, otherwise, you know, their finished products ultimately flooding Indian markets, uh, 
of course, British Indian market, we got reduced to market level, you might consumers level, you might be aware. So, the British rule simultaneously led to the disintegration of, you know, that uh, uh, the economy and, and several other, you know, that the changes, you know, that which created a new social condition, we are talking about and uh, new social conditions and class structure, you know that. So, uh, uh, this British exploitation resulted in not only the destruction or, uh, or disintegration of uh, uh, the native indigenous, you know, that economy and also several changes, you know, that in terms of bureaucracy, in terms of mid emergence of middle class, in terms of railway, postal, uh, there are so many modern things brought in, no doubt at all. But, you know, that after, after their exit, you know, we benefited that school. But, you know, they brought in not to, you know, that ensure the welfare of Indian people, Indian masses, but to further their exploitation, that is for your kind information. But it is not free from, you know, that impact on Indian society, Indian way of life also. It is that way, ladies and gentlemen. So, this ultimately, you know, provided space to sense, you know, the uh, sense of the deprivation and conscious sense of deprivation. You feel relatively deprived. You are not allowed to enjoy what the British people were allowed to enjoy. You were restricted all around. They controlled us. They restricted and rather they exploited our resources. It is that way. You, we were deprived. The, the space to sense of deprivation. You are prevented from enjoying something which, you know, that the British people were allowed to do. And consciousness, you know, the, the, from which, you know, the, the very nationalism. You know, this particular situation, you know, prompted, you know, the nationalism spirit ultimately. That the people became victims of exploitation. The relative deprivation, the frustration, the imperialist rule rather and devastation of you know that Indian economy to the core and got reduced to mere you know consumers. So, all around forced famine, you know well what happened everything, you know that uh, you know they were you know the, the Britain itself came down after waging war, the, the various, the two wars you know they, they became bankrupt, otherwise they would not have you know that stopped. You might be aware. So, all these world wars, you know, we have to thank also parallel. Of course, you know, that loss of casualties, loss of lives, different story. But, you know, that these guys have become bankrupt. That's why, you know, that they withdrew from, you know, different colonies. <laughs> Otherwise, they would not have. They would have continued to exploit, you know, the uh, different, you know, colonies they had throughout the world. The, the Asia, Africa, even Latin America, you know the story. So, the British conquest of India, you know, that led to the, the transformation of feudal economy to capitalist economy. For the idea you know, from East India Company, you know, that they got, once they assumed 1857, Sipa Mutiny, Magna Carta, you know, that of India's, you know, that history might be aware. The British directly assumed the power and various governor generals came, you know, they practice here <laughs> all their exploitative, you know, that uh, systematic exploitation they did. So, what happened, right? That led to transformation of feudal agriculture based economy to capitalist economy, factory based mode of production in place of cottage based agriculture dependent economy you might be aware this led to the disruption you know, that it, it it destroyed the fabric of old order uh, the old land relations also you know that so our own you know that native indigenous people lost their land because of their various exploitative policies uh, uh, the rentier class of course you know came the intermediaries benefited you know we call kanganis you know that all your hr people the ITO you call kanganis <laughs> they 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 connived with you know that the British people so as to exploit Indian masses more. Various zamindaris, rightwaris, you know, all those you know the, the mechanisms, you know, ultimately making uh, the Indian agriculture people, you know, that landlords, you know, bankrupt, you might be they they they, they lost everything. So led to the disruption of the old land relations, you might be aware. It is that way. So in place of you know that the village commune, a community, of course, you know, appeared the modern person proprietors, you know, the modernity came, the peasant proprietors, you know, that the, the complete relationship, you know, that uh, based on land got altered because of the exploitation uh, or zamindars as private owners of land, you might be aware, you know, they are intermediaries, that is the idea, no? so they favored, you know, the British people as well as they amazed wealth at the cost of, you know, that Indian masses, the Indian agricultural communities, you might be aware, so these are all the things happen, you know, this is highlighted by A or this I. Ladies and gentlemen, not only that, the traditional artisans, you know, uh, the guilded society we are talking about, disappeared with modern industry. Yeah, factory based mode of production, all cottage based industries, you know, got destroyed. The new classes like, you know, the capitalists, industrial workers, capitalists, owning class, owners, industrial workers, working class, of course, you know, laborers, the tenants, you know, that rentier class, tenants and merchants, you know, the different, different classes emerged. So, you had one setup in place of that, 
you know that you, you got a new setup after this exploitation where you know that the people got affected indian masses you know that got affected all round because of the emergence of the, the private property because of the british exploitation you might be aware so there was an emergence of middle class also though we are talking about you know that uh, house on the one hand the capitalist and have nots on the other there are emergence of middle classes you know who have got you know the technical skills english education you know that completely relying on you know they are sons of saraswati sons and daughters of saraswati huh? may not be lakshmi got the idea na so they uh, there was emergence of you know that the middle class you know that uh, there were demands like indigenization of civil services civil rights liberties ladies and gentlemen we are talking about all this so it is that way you know that it's not only you know the the british uh, british is coming and ruling here of course indians also started participating you know satyendra tagur even you know that netaji subhash chandra bose was ics you might be aware all these things we are talking about so indigenization of civil service and civil rights you have to personalize customize to the local tradition and also the press freedom ilbert bill everything you heard right it is that way so there was a feeling of deprivation and simmering discontent you know once you are prevented from enjoying something of your own resources rather the british colonizers were exploiting you enjoying you in front of your eyes that resulted in you know there some sort of dissatisfaction the contradiction the exploitation they were unable to tolerate simmering discontent that led to conflict antagonism the class conflict you are talking about ladies and gentlemen so he stated that although the british government initiated the various exploitative measures in india but unintentionally this is what we say manifest function latent function manifest function latent function manifest function you are very clear this is what going to happen latent function you never recognize this you are unaware it is hidden so british people they were doing all those exploitative measures parallelly a good thing happened for india unintentionally not british people thought about it unintentionally this efforts led to unific unification of the country the patriotism the nationalism spirit came india has one land because all all victims you know came together all all you know the victims of you know british exploitation uh, british policies of exploitation came together who lost everything you know that came together to drive away this you know the colonizers or or exploiters or imperialists you might be aware ladies and gentlemen we are talking about this way i think it is right time you know that let me take you uh, to the next level of course what is this you know not only that the role of railways press you know everything you know that the significant in this direction we are talking about you know that they did everything built everything for their own exploitation but that benefited later we people the sense of deprivation and discontent led to various social movements cutting across various classes the collective representation people came together collectively started expressing the discontent you know that the protest movement you might be sometimes it became violent also the chauri chaura incident and various movements you know civil disobedience movement we talk about quit india movement talk about you know that uh, ncm non cooperation movement we are talking about everything you know the different different movements and also it's not free from violence also you know that uh, 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 the revolutionary socialist we are talking about lala hardial you know the bhagat singh you know the jallianwala bag massacre you know all those so the people came together to express though they never tolerate you know that is that way so the collective representation and national sentiments among indians nationalism spirit came grown why the people got unified the unif unification of india the unified spirit of india nationalism patriotism Came because the, the people cutting across, you know, different regions, different caste, different communities, different language, you know, different religions, you know, that came together, you know, that uh, uh, the common ground. They are all victims of, you know, that the, the colonial exploitation, the colonial imperialism. You know, you might be aware. So that brought the sense of, you know, that uh, uh, nationalism, the sentiment came in ultimately. You know, well. So the, you know, and also the thanks to the railways press, you know, that that also, you know, responsible, you know, in terms of transportation. transportation facilitated connected the people even the press connected the people the very spirit of press you know in dissemination of information the awareness to the people you might be aware all these things you know that way it may be local lingua franca also apart from english you know the regional languages mouthpiece also so he talked about you know the social background of indian nationalism in five phases you know that especially you know that you go through the book you will come to know you know that the social base of the movement got widen every time it moved to the next level you know that's what it, it became mass movement the, from the day of you know that entry of mahatma gandhi so he is questioning you know the mahatma gandhi's motive of course you know it is marxian tradition 
it is that way naturally. So, on similar lines, he predicted the next phase would be dominated by the interest of the capitalist class. Even today, it is highly relevant. It is corporate driven politics, the lobby, quid pro quo, as happening in you know the Western politics, you might be aware. Same thing happening here, right? You know that it is thing. You know that if you avail loan, you know that agricultural farmer availing loan, unable to pay, he has to commit suicide. But whereas we are very happy, uh, the, the political nexus between uh, 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 all those, you know, economic offenders, Vijay Malaya, Nero Modi, uh, it is prominent to people. You got list of uh, people. They were they were surviving with the, with the patronage by various political leaders. You might be aware, you know, that all these things we are talking about. So that resulted in bankrupt of you know that Indian banking mechanism. You know story. Ladies and gentlemen, but in spite of that, you know, the government, we are all irrespective of political party, very keen to, uh, 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 you know, that support the, the corporate, corporate concession, corporate measures. That's what we say, corporate driven politics we are talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, so, you know, that uh, this is not all the capitalistic line thinking, capitalist, uh, uh, you know, that uh, uh, the capitalism inflicting upon the Indian society. You can't escape from that. It's natural. The byproduct, ladies and gentlemen, the process giving its products. Ladies and gentlemen, there would be. Uh, uh, issues like you know that the communalism, you know that uh, and, and under India's path of development, they are this size prediction, the capitalistic formation and communalism and interprovincial life, you know rivalries. Of course, there will be you know the rivalries. You know he predicted that way. I don't know, but it's not happening. But you know that interprovincial rivalries. Of course, you know that uh, we are talking about cooperative federalism, competitive federalism. You know the, the Bihar states ultimately you know benefiting more, though they, they do nothing. <laughs> Of course, they are, they are. They also started doing something. You might be aware uh, 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 the developmental activities. That's different scenario. But as you got European Union picks nations, you got Bimara states in India. The Western states, Southern states, whose parameters can be equated with European countries, they have started complaining. There should be even the Finance Commission Article 280. They are talking about there should be uh, the, the terms of reference. There should be performance-based incentives. They are talking about. You might be aware, and and the 42 percent uh, share is not sufficient. You have to give more. The cry is there, you might be aware, and also uh, the fund for disaster management, everything they are talking there, you might be aware. There is a gentleman, and even the Niti Aayog, you know, that, you know, center state relations, how the federalism spirit is compromised. So, definitely, you, you take that way, interprovincial, uh, uh, the regional differences, you know, uh, uh, it is that way. So, India's, even the political representation we speak about, you know, that only North and West are getting represented in the majority rule now you know it should be diversified to incorporate uh, uh, from you know the uh, the south east and northeastern portion more to have you know diversified governance when we are talking about reforms in the united nation organization 75th year we have to do reform also to make it the political representation should be diversified so that you can accommodate more union ministers from south east and the northeast also to 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 be representative to, to make relevance you know that uh, uh, to be more precise in terms of administration, ladies and gentlemen, of course, you know, the leader should decide. So, it is that way and opposition to mass struggles, you know, the by, uh, uh, you know, that leaders, you know, that it is that way. So, the people are not ready to tolerate. Our leaders are not, you know, that uh, aversion to the mass struggle. You know, that's why they try to control, you know, very well all these things happening. That's what, you know, they, they will impose a law and order deterioration, Article 356, you know, well. Otherwise, all those protests happen, you know, that sterilite or any environmental degradation or any protest, even the, the, the big project, eight lane projects between Salem and uh, the Chennai the, for, to support Jindal, how at the cost of agricultural lands, you know, so, but, but the leaders, you know, that who signed this, you know, the deal with corporate people, but they go against people, they go against mass struggle. So, the very leaders who have, who instead of speaking for masses, they started speaking for corporate. That's why we say corporate driven politics, eh? lobby, quid pro quo. It is that way. Ladies and gentlemen, you understand better. So, these would be likely features of the next phase of development. This is a see, it is like Prophet Messiah, like Karl Marx, he started about Indian society. His laboratory is Indian society. It is true also, it is happening also. Something he said in 1970s. So, today we are uh, reaping the benefits. So, these would be likely features of the next phase of development. That is what India's path of development he predicts in such a way, right? It is that way. The underlying factor is. You know that that social unrest is rooted in capitalist path of development followed by because you know he prescribes the solution as you know that uh, uh, the very socialism in place of exploitative capitalism you know very well that's what Marxism is all about 
naturally here this I belonging to Marxian tradition will bring that no doubt at all right. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about the very criticisms. Of course, you know, this approach to Indian nationalism was criticized for being economic determinist because, you know, the, the uh, material has become matrix. You never go beyond materialistic lens. That is a criticism we are talking about. So, Yogendra Singh also, you know, that advocated. Yogendra Singh, you know, very well in social change we are going to discuss, who wrote the book Modernization of Indian Tradition. It is he who advocated that, you know, it lacked empirical verification. There is no proof. He says, there is no, you know, it's, there is no scientific basis for that. That is what, maybe it is ideological than empirical. This is according to Yogendra Singh about, you know, here they saw, you know, contribution. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about. So, this is criticism part. Eh? You express your, top sir. <laughs> it is that way, you know, you raise your, you know, it is that way objection. Uh, against, you know, here they saw his Marxian tradition. Nothing to do with me. I, I hope you understand better. You cooperate. Fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. So, moreover, many vital questions afflicting the life of average common Indian was unable to find an incisive, incisive resonance in his writings. You know, this is what so most of the you know that very minutest details not finding place. As he said, the socio-cultural structure, maybe in terms of caste, judgment system, even judgment system, he said exploitative. The very year they side, even the caste system and socio religious dominance. As he said, you know, that Indian way of life is Hindu way of life. There are minorities, no doubt. Even Indian minorities tuning to the, you know, the lifestyle of, you know, that majority religion. Maybe different religion and, and a common culture you see, as you see in Indonesia. In Indonesia, the currency you will see, Lord Ganesha's, you know, that, uh, you know, that uh, uh, scripture. Of course, Lord Ganesha's photo there. Of course, you know, the drawings there, the very currency. So, though they are Muslims, majority Muslims, largest Muslim population, you know, very well. But they share common culture. So, uh, the same way, India, the Hindu way of life in terms of culture I am speaking, not, no, it is not going against minorities. Ladies and gentlemen, you understand, even the Indian minorities tuned to the, the Hindu way of living in such a way, predominantly that will be there. That is what influence, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about. And uh, that looks odd when they, when they try to, you know, trace origin from Middle East countries, you know, that, that, that becomes, you know, that, you know, all those, you know, well, how the political leaders are entering into conflict, right. So, moreover, many vital questions afflicting the life of average common Indian was unable to find incisive, you know, that uh, uh, incisive, you know, that resonance in his writing. So, the minute details he missed, that is accusation we are talking about. So, instead, he preferred incessantly, you know, that continuously to portray the pre conclusion you know, it is a preclusion. This is what will happen, like, like ideological. Like, like profit, like uh, you know that you, prophecy, like <laughs> it is that way. So it's a pre-conclusive remarks by saying that since there were so many, you know, that shortcomings in capitalism. Of course, so many shortcomings, no doubt at all, on the part of capitalism, especially the capitalist India then under British rule. The obvious, you know, that Nostrum. Of course, you know that it is a prescription by inefficient or you know that ill-trained person. That's what Nostrum is all about. So, uh, rem you know that that remained with socialism. That is the point ultimately. So, of course, there were, you know, the shortcomings on the part of, you know, the capitalism. But this preclusion, of course, pre-conclusive remarks made by uh, uh, E.R. Desai was taken to the task, of course, you know, criticized. And perhaps the limitation on the part of, you know, Marxist scholars, you know, that is the vital and vexed questions of national and sub-national, you know, the perspectives and, 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 and that, you know, that get blurred and obscured, hidden. Is that the way? Know that see you you are always running after the notion of economic determinism you are not addressing you know that uh, national subnational perspectives maybe in terms of caste system or religious you know that influence or cultural tendencies you know that the predominantly the you know that the very judgment system how these are all things you know that getting blurred not addressed properly because you know he was completely taken away occupied by the notion of economic determinism or dialectic materialism or historical materialism of Marxian view uh, the class, the conflict, the exploitation, uh, uh, it is that way and, and revolution of kind and socialism as solution that way. So, this might be one of the reasons which had led to uh, uh, the gradual decimation, of course, you know that wiped out of Marxism and Marxist analysis uh, in the domain of sociology and social courses. The point is, you know, it became ult ultimately, you know, that uh, too much of perspectives, ideological, uh, then pragmatic, that was the criticism. 
as as yogendra singh you know the uh, uh, said you know that uh, it's lacking empirical evidence scientific basis that way also and a lot of minute details not available macro level it's it's, it's uh, traveling in the path of those some extent we are talking about the relevance with current reality contemporariness also not free from criticism let us germ it in that way. So, so this shortcomings in capitalism no way justify socialism or communism in that way. That is the, that is the stand taken by critics, you might be aware. So, however, this study of Desoy has been very popular in showing the importance of Marxist approach. Let us germ it, we are talking about. So, this study of Desoy has been very popular in showing the importance of Marxist approach. Anyway, so the very Marxian tradition you see in the Indian society. Because of this, you know, that uh, uh, the very uh, uh, the criticisms, you know, that of course, you come to know, of course, very air, there are contributions, you come to know, you understand. So, there is a German, you know, that you can go through uh, uh, the books written by air, there is especially, you know, that the, the social background of Indian nationalism, of course, other materials, the resources available, especially I said the economic and political weekly article, especially in the 2015, you know, that uh, 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 birth centenary year, uh, the article release. Of course, it is also not complete and I gathered, you know, different sources so as to meet the syllabus demands. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it is right time, you know, that for me uh, to take you to the uh, original beginning, previous year question, hope with this understanding you can definitely answer, you know, what I am talking, uh, 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 the original question. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, see, this is what, now you understood the concept, I explained, hope you would have understood. Definitely, I would have made difference in uh, thinking about, you know, Marxian tradition, I believe. So, the critically evaluate the Marxian analysis on Indian society through A.R. Desai's contribution, social background of Indian nationalism and India's path of development. Discuss Marxist approach and analysis of Indian nationalism. See, the conflict, exploitation, how he related. Uh, got the idea, no? even he questioned, you know, that very Gandhian mass movement and its motive is that way. So, analyze A.R. Desai's views on India's path of development. Yeah, of course. He predicted that, you know, that it's going to be capitalist, you know, the economy, of course, and uh, with shortcomings, of course, and he provides solution for socialistic establishment also in place of that. And also, you know, the very evils of capitalism, of course, he spoke about the communalism uh, all around, you know, that the mass movements, uh, the leaders, you know, that uh, aversion towards it, everything. So all these things, you know, that we spoke, ladies and gentlemen, I think you would understand the spirit of the question. Only thing you have to go through and refer all those, you know, especially the social background of Indian nationalism, uh, uh, the very, you know, the book of Yer Desai, the Marxian tradition, ladies and gentlemen. Got any questions? You can type your question. It's my, I feel privileged to answer your question, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it is that way. I think you know that you can also consult other materials, right? Igno materials and all basic books, you know, that to have and you know that uh, uh, Indian society based books, you know, that to have the glimpse of, you know, Marxian tradition, E.R. Desa and uh, you know that you will, you will understand fantastic. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I think it is right time, you know, that uh, thanks for your participation. Welcome to Anna Academy once again. This is Success Sampath so far interacted with you, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll, we will meet tomorrow, same time, you know, that with another topic, you know, that uh, uh, that's going to enrich your score in mains written examination so that, you know, you become an officer, leader of your own capacity. And uh, you can also use my referral code, say, success, you know, that to avail maximum 10% discount, but we strongly recommend Icon Iconic program that benefits you more. Ladies and gentlemen, so uh, that's fantastic. Hope I would have made some difference in terms of your understanding when it comes to uh, uh, various Indian sociologists and, you know, the global sociologists as well various perspectives, basic concepts we discussed. Please watch all those previous videos. So I am pretty sure if you strictly adhere to what I am saying in the classroom, what I am discussing with you, what the material I will share with you, scoring more than 450 plus out of 500 is highly realistic. And also you please reach me in all my social media networks, especially you can watch, you know, that everyday question also, Success Sampath or Sampath Irvengadam through Telegram, YouTube channel, Facebook, and you know, the Twitter, everywhere I am available. You reach me there to benefit more. So, welcome to Anna Academy, ladies and gentlemen. This is Success Sampath signing off from you. Thank you so much for the wonderful participation. Bye. Thank you.